Commission Chairs of Slow Food Urban San Diego, um, which supported some of the goals and things for this workshop. Thank you, Jen and Steph, who is here. Um, so you guys will have actually a place to mix your dough. Um, has anybody made bread at home before? Has anybody made bread regularly at home? It's kind of it's kind of a pain, right? It takes a long time. You have to let it rise and, and then come back and you know mix it. So if you just think all of a sudden like, hey, I want bread with dinner tonight, it's not really doable like that because it takes a lot of prep. Um, I found this book a few years ago. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it. It's called Artist and Bread in Five Minutes a Day. Um, and it pretty much changed my life. And then I bought it for my mom, and it changed her life. And then she bought it for all of her friends. And none of us have bought bread in probably two or three years now. Like, I just don't wow. buy bread anymore. It's so easy to do this way. Um, it's one of the known meat techniques. So there was, you know, a couple known meat techniques that came out in the New York Times that got really popular. Um, but those still take a long time. You don't have to knead it, but you still have to let it rest forever, and you still only get one loaf out of it. Um, what's so awesome about this one is you mix up a batch of dough that will give you four loaves, and it can sit in your fridge for up to two weeks. So you yeah. just mix up the big, you know, batch, and then whenever you want one, you go in the fridge, rip off the hunk of dough, you know, let it rest. There's a little bit different directions for the different recipes, and then throw it in and bake it so you really can just decide you want bread in an hour and it can be done. Um, so I'll have, I have one copy of this you guys can pour through. I highly recommend if you like this today to go ahead and um, pick it up. I think you can get it on Amazon, you can get it at any of the bookstores around here. Um, it sits on my counter next to my coffee grinder, that's how much I use it. So um, I'll go over a little bit of the basic technique and recipe you guys all have the master recipe, which is just the French fry one, it's the first recipe in the book, um, and it kind of just outlines the basic technique, and then there's a zillion other recipes in the book with different flours and wheat bran, you can do a whole wheat, um, they have some cornbread ones, there's a whole bunch of different types, you can do pizza crust with this dough, um, there's a couple other doughs that work a little better, they also have a whole pizza book out now, so it's really versatile and you can pretty much make anything with it. Um, so again, this is the master recipe. The quantities on here are for, are for the full recipe, which will get you four loaves worth. Um, for the, the class today, we're just going to do a half recipe, um, just because <laughs> we don't have enough stuff for everybody to do the full one. So, um, so you can look at the numbers here, but go by the numbers that are at each station here, because we'll just do a half. But that'll still get you two loaves, and you'll take your dough home, and you can finish out the baking at home. Um, so, like I said, what's nice about this is it stores in your refrigerator for up to two weeks, and the reason that it can do that is because it's a really wet dough. You'll see it looks more like cookie batter. Um, you're not going to be able to take that dough out and make a ball and knead it and work with it like you normally would. It's really wet and sticky, so you just mix it in your bowl or bucket. Um, I, I do at home in one of these in the five-gallon bucket with a lid, and I just throw that in my fridge. Um, so if you get into this, I would, I would probably pick one of these up. It just takes up less room in the refrigerator than a wide bowl. Um, so basically what you do is you just take your water, which this is, um, you want it to be warm but not hot. You want it to activate the yeast but not, <laughs> not kill them. Um, so we're, we've got it as hot as we can here from the bathroom. I'm hoping it'll be warm enough to, to work for you guys. Um, and then you just take your water, you put it in your bowl or your bucket, and then you add the yeast. Um, you can really use any kind of yeast for this bread. It really doesn't matter. Any of them will work. You don't have to proof it. You don't have to do all that fussy thing where you wait for it to bubble and see if it's alive. Pretty much if it's in the expiration date and you haven't stored it like on your fireplace or somewhere near, it should be fine. Um, I typically use this granulated yeast. This is just the Red Star Active Dry Granulated Yeast. Um, I didn't know this until I was buying for this class, but you can get this at Specialty Produce for $2.25. And I don't know, does Peoples have the bulk? Yes, it's yeah, in bulk, but you can order it. Okay, so Peoples Produce you can order too. Um, because for the full recipe, you use one and a half tablespoons. So you go through it pretty quickly. Those little envelopes at the grocery store are not, <laughs> you're going to go through them way too fast. So buy it in bulk. Um, but it's pretty easy to find around here. Let's find out. And not expensive. Um, and I don't store, I store mine in the cupboard, you can store them in the fridge too, um, either way. There's a little note on here on using fresh cake yeast, which I haven't been able to find. It, it tastes really
really good once you get into bread making and want to experiment with that. Um, it's a cool thing to experiment with. It's, it's not granulated or, you know, active. it's just a fresh, um, kind of, it's sold in like a brick. And there's a little bit of a change in measurement. So if you get into it and want to play with that, it, that's on there as well. But typically this is what you'll find in the stores. Um, so you just mix your yeast into the water, then you mix your salt into the water. Again, no proofing, no waiting, just, I, I don't even use my spoon, I just smush it around in the bucket a little bit. Um, and then you add your flour, and like I said, this is no need. So you really just take your spoon and you mix it up until it's all incorporated, and then you're done. So you don't have to knead it, just once everything looks evenly kind of moist and incorporated, there's no bits of flour along the bottom, no water puddles, then you're done. Stick it on top of your fridge or somewhere warm for two hours or longer. I go to work sometimes and come back and... You know, it's threatening to spill over the top. Um, and then you throw it in the fridge and it sits there for two weeks or, you know, you might use it up faster than that. Um, so we can go ahead and file through. Does everybody have a bowl that wants one? Um, I've got a couple of extra mixing spoons up here at the end, so um, it might, you know, kind of just slow us down. But we've got our water station here, and because we're doing a half recipe, um, I just made the little line on the cup here, just fill it up to the top of that masking tape line um, and pour it in your bowl and then you've got the yeast and your salt and then go ahead and um, your flour and actually a wonderful volunteer filled up this with more water but I actually need this for flour so we're going to dump the rest of this drinking cup. No, we're not. It's just <laughs> I'll go take care of that in a minute. Um, so, and then you just mix it up, and then you guys can take it with you. Um, since all of these bowls, um, Dom, you can just leave yours in your bowl, put your towel over it, and by the time you get home, just leave it out for two hours. Um, everybody else has one of our bowls. We've got Ziplocs for you just to transfer it into. Um, with any of this dough, you guys probably know, you don't want to seal it. So if you're using a lidded bucket at home, put the lid on it so nothing falls in. Don't snap it down, because as the yeast you know, expands, it'll explode. Um, and same with your Ziploc today, don't seal it, just leave it open um, for at least two hours until you get home, and then you can put it in a bowl or whatever. I wouldn't leave it in your Ziploc in your fridge, it's just not going to give it enough room to expand, it's going to fill over, because it gets, usually when I start for the whole recipe, it fills up about here, and by the time it rises, it's usually closer to here, so it rises quite a bit. Um, so you get a lot of dough for it, and then when you're ready to bake one, um, you can use it right after it's risen, but it's a lot easier when it's cold. So I would plan ahead to put it in the fridge for at least a couple hours. Then when you're ready to bake it, you just go in, you follow the recipe in the book, but they're all basically similar. You rip off a, like a one pound, you know, a quarter of the recipe, about a grapefruit size ball. Um, and just, you can use as much flour as you need to keep it from sticking to your pans. Um, and then I'll show you guys once somebody has one mixed up, but you have to do what's called cloaking. So you have your ball of dough, and then you want to take a little piece from the top and wrap it around the side, and then turn it and do that on each of the four sides. And what that does is it spreads the gluten around. It kind of stretches the gluten over the ball of dough. And that's part of what gives you that nice crackly crust. Um, anybody who's used a bread machine at home, it's super easy, but you don't get that nice crust, that artisan crust. It's kind of that soft, mushy sandwich bread feel. This will give you that really awesome, good brown crust, and I like the picture there. Um, so why don't you guys start filing through and getting your stuff. I'm going to go dump this water so we can measure 